here before welcome back um i want to say i'm so 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 sorry it took me forever to do this video which is my june wrap up um so everything that i read in june um i recorded a couple videos and i hated all of them and i was like oh and it was too long i was like no 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 i don't like it at all <laughs> so i'm redoing it um and putting it up here for you guys finally <laughs> so like i said i am sorry and i hope you guys enjoy and let's go ahead and get started okay so for this first series that i read i actually don't have a physical copy of it because uh, there's no physical copies translated in english for it yet hopefully it does have one um this was actually recommended by somebody to me in the comments and i'll go ahead and put their name up on the screen um they recommended me this manga this series because i was talking about sayonara football and how much i was enjoying it and that is blue lock so i read a about i would say about eight to ten chapters that i read and i'm really enjoying the story so far it's very interesting and kind of refreshing if you're <laughs> very refreshing if you are reading a lot of um team sports manga because this one is very very different um so <laughs> blue lock <clears throat> is about this the um, soccer committee in japan that one of the members is very um sad and frustrated that japan has not won the world cup and that they don't get very far and they don't really understand why this is the case because japan is known to excel well in teams and that's why they do so well in baseball but for some reason it doesn't apply to football and so uh, she um, recruits this individual who creates this facility called Blue Lock where they recruit 300 high school students who are strikers and cultivate them to be the best striker in Japan and hopefully that player will be able to lead Japan to victory in the World Cup. So yeah, <laughs> and what I mean by it being very... <laughs> It's different and kind of refresh refreshing is because um so since this is a team sport usually when you read in manga um team sports they're like you know it's teamwork teamwork you have to work together as a team you need to practice together you need to form relationships with one another you cannot win this on your own everybody has to chip in to be able to win you know together so it's always about being together but in blue lock it's like no it, you as a striker you must be very egotistical and you must believe that you are the best player and also to be the best player and have the teammates kind of your teammates help assist you in a way or be like your pawns to <laughs> um make goals and to win the game so yeah um, that's what makes it really refreshing and very interesting as well so yeah it is a really really cool read i do hope there is a physical release to it i believe they won the kodansha award this year or i don't know how that works but um they won it so maybe uh, that means that I might get physical copies in english maybe um but there are uh, digital uh versions of it and can buy that but it's really like far behind like i think they just released the fourth volume to the series so i don't know what's going on with that but um so i will actually buy the digital copies just to give my support and hopefully one day like i said it has physical copies of it so yeah i want to say thank you so much for recommending me this one i am having a lot of fun reading it so to stick with the whole blue thing, <laughs> um, I read another series that has blue in the title and that is Blue Flag. <laughs> so I read volumes one through eight, which is the complete set to the series. And I had a really, really, really fun time reading this and I enjoyed it very much. I can see why people don't too much like the ending. Um, I would say I'm, Personally, for me, I'm not mad at it at all, but I not but I, I'm not mad at it. I understand where people are coming from with some of the things that um, they did not quite like at the ending. So I get it. I totally understand. There's one thing I wish 
I, that could have happened in the ending was that I wish we could have saw Toma as an adult. That would have been very, very cool. We've seen everybody else as an adult but him. Like, I understand where we're um, looking through his perspective, but, you know, I would have loved to see him, you know, you know. <laughs> um, but yes, I enjoyed it very much. And I think Kaito did a wonderful job telling this very beautiful coming to age story so and high school romance as well and one of the things that i love that keto did was that <laughs> keto allowed all the characters to be able to talk and voice their opinions whether it would whether it was like you know productive or it was just a whole bunch of nonsense and just like a string of thoughts everybody had the opportunity to you know voice their opinion which i thought was very appreciative and kaito actually mentions it in the ending in volume eight where they were like they read a whole bunch of high school romances and they just really <laughs> What really irked them is that none of the characters talked to each other. Like once, when there was a problem, nobody talked to each other. They just let misunderstandings carry on until like they were forced to talk or it was the last resort or something like that. So I definitely appreciate um, that Kaito did that within Blue Flag. If you read a lot of high school romances, you'll get the same um, feeling where it's just like, if they just sat down and talked, that would be absolutely amazing. Um, and yeah, and the artwork is absolutely beautiful and it's really, really, really good. I would say, um, if you are looking to read the series, the ending is very, um, controversial, <laughs> very controversial. I think I can see why people either love it or hate it. I honestly do. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm really happy that I read it and I enjoyed my ride from the beginning to the end of the series and I'm happy to have this. So <laughs> okay so the next series i read was blue period volume three and i really enjoyed this volume i enjoyed it um i would say more than the second one and it was just i don't know i don't know why i didn't enjoy the second volume as much i'm not sure but Happy to have the third one. I'm happy to have read it. I'm still really enjoying the story and enjoying all the characters. I think what I really loved about this volume is that um, Yaktora, he actually learned about composition in the second volume. And like, you know, he learned how that, you know, is very important to have in your artwork is some sort, some form of composition. And <laughs> since he learned that that was very important, that was the only thing that he just focused on in here until, you know, he was told like, hey, like, you know, yes, composition is very important, but you cannot let that take away from, you know, the artwork that you are trying you know your overall art and what you are trying to portray and that composition is just a tool to help you know bring your artwork to life so um yeah i thought that was very very cute so like you know when somebody like learns something that's like really important and they just <laughs> end up just doing that and that's what Yator <laughs> yatora did with <laughs> when he learned about composition so that was really really cute um, and then he also learned about using different materials and how to actually apply those materials as well, which is really cool. So instead of using like, you know, pencil and paint, you can use like chalk or, you know, whatever kind of material you can use anything in art, honestly. And then, um, yeah, learning different ways to apply the art. Like you don't actually have to use a pencil, you know, and draw on, you know, your canvas or your piece of paper. You can do it a different type of way so yeah i would i thought that was really really cool yeah i am enjoying it very much i think we're winding down hopefully in the next volume it's exams i would i think so i definitely do think so i believe what is the instructor Oh yeah, in one and a half months. So yeah, it's definitely going to be going over in the fourth volume. And I'm very, very excited about that. And yeah, I look forward to reading volume four. And I hope we get to see some of the characters that we've been introduced in the 
you know, past books. Um, you, I mean, for the most part, we honestly really focused on Yektora. And um, yeah, yeah, hopefully you get to see them a little bit more. Okay, so the next series I read was Undead Unlock Volume 1. And um, this is a very, very interesting story with very interesting characters. And I honestly do not have an opinion on it as of yet. I would have to um, read the second and third volume to see if I am going to enjoy this or not. Uh, but so far, like I said, it is very, very interesting. And I look forward to seeing how the story is told in the next few volumes. So yeah, Undead Unluck. <laughs> okay, so the next series I read was Slumbering Beauty Volume 1. And I enjoyed this so much. After I got done reading it, I was like, why didn't I get the second volume? It's so good to me. Um, so I really love the dialogue, the characters, and the art style in here. Um, I think it's really cool, and I am really enjoying the story so far. And I love the protagonist. She is so great. She's very snarky, and she doesn't really care about people's opinions about her. She just, you know, does her own thing, which I appreciate very, very much. And so um, she is a person that absolutely loves to sleep, which I totally understand her. I can be in bed all day if I could. And one day she's waking up by a sleep spirit and his name is Nerumi, who is this individual right here. And they get acquainted with one another and <laughs> that's where the story begins. So um, he takes her on a few of his shifts. So as a sleep spirit, um, they have to wake up people and they have to also put them to sleep. And so he has uh, Yanako tag along and she realizes that, hey, she can actually do this because she's really good at putting t people to sleep as well. So yeah, I really look forward to reading the second volume to this. Okay, so the next series I read was the Witch and the Beast Volume 3 and 4 and OMG, I had a blast reading this one as well. I really do love this series and I really do hope more people pick this up. It is so stinking good. So in uh, um, these volumes right here, we get introduced to a new group um, in the series and that is the Paladine Corp and they're part of the church. And so you have people within the magical organization, then you have magical people or yeah, magical people. And then you have people in the Paladine Corp or, you know, part of the church. So yeah, really, really interesting. And oh my goodness, I absolutely love the characters in here. Really, really good. We got introduced to one of the leaders. Is he a leader? Oh, he's the head of the Paladine Corp 6th Battalion of the Third Continent. We got introduced to him. We got introduced to another witch here. And yeah, that was basically it in volume three and four so um the witch that were introduced in these two volumes her name is helga and she was falsely accused of killing a whole bunch of like cute guys and so the paladine corp is after her and um going to are they gonna destroy her I think they're gonna kill her most definitely um because of her crimes and guidu and ashoff are trying to get to the witch before the paladine corpse does because they uh, know that she is innocent and they want to help her out and also retrieve uh or you know yeah retrieve or keep hold of a very popular pop i was about to say popular but a very powerful weapon um that she holds so yeah really really good i cannot wait for the fifth volume so good volume four we left off to a point where we might figure out a little bit a little bit more about greedy so that's very very interesting and yeah i can't wait for the next one
Okay, so the next series I read was Soul Eater Volumes 2 and 3 and I don't know what else to say about this series that I have not already said but I am loving it <laughs> and I'm really enjoying reading it. I think Huh, I'm trying to figure out. I know I really did like Stein in the anime, but like I'm like literally falling in love with him in the manga. I don't know. I feel like there hasn't been anything different, but I don't know. I guess I'm just really appreciating him more as a character and just really enjoying him a lot. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> but um, in these two volumes, we get introduced to Corona and Ragnar Ragnarok. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so like, my tongue seems so twisted for some odd reason today. But we get to introduce to them Medusa and the Wolfman and we get to figure out what Medusa's whole plan is and that is to unleash the Kishin, Kishin that is um, underneath the skull. And then there's some also other things as well. We have Excalibur. Uh, I absolutely love him. Hilarious. I have Excalibur. Uh, we also read about Tsubaki's brother and her and Blackstar taking him down. And uh, another funny moment is in volume three is when they have to take their exams and that's just absolutely great. And then also um, having Death the Kid encounter or doing finding out more about people who are collecting souls for a supposed Kishin that's being developed. So yeah, really loving it. Can't wait for volume four and to read it. Okay, so the next series I read was Horimiya. <laughs> so I read volumes one through three and I absolutely loved it. It was a lot of fun. I had a lot of laughs. I am enjoying I am enjoying all the characters. Um, I really love the chemistry amongst them. It's really, really great. I read I think towards probably the middle of volume three like a few years ago so it was kind of like more of a reread for me but um i am very excited to read the rest because that that part will be new for me and i am looking forward to it very very much and honestly i don't know if i'm going to watch the anime i don't think don't, i don't even think i have a desire to Honestly, I'm very um, happy with reading the manga. But if you guys think it is worthwhile, just let me know and then I probably might try to check it out. So yeah, what do you mean? Okay, so the next series I read was Animal Land Volumes 1 through 3. And this was a very, very interesting read. Um, but even though it was interesting, I liked it a lot. Um, it was kind of trippy for me in the beginning, mostly because of all the tanukis and especially how they're drawn. I was just like, oh wow, this is, this is something. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, it's Animal Land is about this baby who was abandoned by his mother and transported to the world of animals. And so there are supposedly no humans on this planet except for animals. And a Tanuki ends up fighting him and her name is Momo Momo Momoke or no Momoko. What is her? Yeah, Monoko. Um, so she um, finds him and she is determined to take care of the baby and to be his mother because she was abandoned when, <laughs> well actually, um, when the story takes place, I guess she was, she wasn't technically abandoned, but she ended up losing her parents, I guess not too long ago when the story starts. They were eaten by um, some I don't know what were they some some feline creature or predator and um 
yeah and so she's been very very lonely and she wants to have a family on her own and so she takes in the baby to do that and then later on when the baby grows up they find out that he can actually communicate with tanukis and so they, at first they thought he was a tanuki then but then they um, realize that he can actually communicate with other animals so in the world of animal land only the same species is able to communicate with one another um and so different species cannot and so there's always misunderstandings or you know things that go on between the different species and so the baby whose name is Teroza his mission as he gets older and once he you know realizes all these things is that he wants to bring all the species together to you know live amongst each other and to not you know harm or kill one another anymore and so he is trying to build a utopia for all animals to live at and to forever well not forever well yeah i guess in a way kind of like forever have food and never worry about going hungry or anything like that and so he his mission right now is trying to get some predators to be on his side because that is probably the hardest hardest group of animals that he probably will have to convince um because you know they eat meat so yeah very 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 interesting and it's kind of serious it's <laughs> Not even kind of, I guess I would say it is kind of serious and it's quite funny that like the covers, if you see, they're quite colorful and just really, I guess, yeah, very colorful and very cute. And so you wouldn't think it would, you know, cover very harsh or serious topics, but it does. Um, but Raiku Asan, I think he mentioned this in the ending of volume one, is that he did want to talk about or, you know, tell a very serious story but he wanted to make all the characters to be very cute so it'd be easier for the audience to digest. So I was like, oh, okay, I get ya, I get ya, and I'm liking it. So yeah, I can't wait to read the rest of the series. Okay, so the next series I read was Ju Osei volumes one through three, which is the complete story story and um like i stated before the reason why i picked this up is because i watched the anime a long time ago and i enjoyed it from what i can remember but the ending i did not like and so i was like oh hopefully the manga is better since you know this is the original adaption to it and um or the original not original adaption the original source material and so i decided to um pick it up and read it and yeah I enjoyed the ending I enjoyed the story as a whole uh, so it's about these twin brothers that live in the far off future and in this future humans live on other planets and man-made space colonies and the twin brothers live you know in the space colony and not many people live on them you have to be like an affluent family uh, to be able to reside there and i believe um the brother's mother is a scientist and then their dad is a political figure yeah and so one day after they're doing their normal stuff they come home and they found out their parents have been murdered and then after that they were captured and sent off to this planet that is unknown to the general public. I think only a few government officials know about this planet. And so usually they send um, criminals who, if their punishment was to get a death sentence, um, or yeah, a death sentence, they would send them off to this particular planet because it has a very, very harsh living environment and Many people do not survive due to the environment and then also due to the people um, that live there because they are very territorial and like violent and things like that. So um, they send them off to this planet and so <laughs> the twin brother's mission is to figure out why their parents were murdered, why they were sent to this planet and then also try to escape it and you know live on their lives. So yeah. very 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 interesting i would say i really loved all the characters um my favorite though is the th 
third the third is him i absolutely love him <laughs> and i love zaggy as not zaggy sorry tiz i love tiz but i do love zaggy um i didn't actually like him in the beginning i liked him towards the end once we um or once you figure out his like motives and then also um they give a little backstory of him in the ending of the third volume of how he you know rose to power so yeah if anyone is interested in this um i'm pretty sure you'll be able to find it online i would say don't try to pick this up physically because it is out of print i would say the third and second volume are easier to find and they're still available it's just the first volume isn't and it's you might if you come across a seller that is like you know trying to charge a lot don't purchase it for them so it could be harder to find the first volume but maybe you can find it online and then like so this is kind of like a sci-fi political action drama yeah it has all those genres in there so if you like that kind of stuff then you probably might enjoy GLC and yeah I enjoyed it very much and honestly I would definitely reread this definitely but yeah I enjoyed it personally <laughs> So, um, the next series I read was Sunny, volumes one through four, I'm not, sorry, volumes one through five, and um, I only need to read one more volume to complete the story, and so far I am really enjoying it. Um, it is about these children that live in a placement home slash orphanage, and um, it goes about it goes on about why they are living there and how it affects them day to day and um and the reason why it's called sunny is because there's a vehicle on the property that is a sunny model and uh it no longer works and that's where all the kids go and hang out in and you know just do whatever um they play um they pour out their fillings in there um they imagine things it's just like their place it's a place for them to be able to express themselves and i kind of think of it as like a clubhouse for them so yeah and because of the subject matter i would say it's quite bittersweet so um there are a lot of sad moments in here and then there are also a lot of uh fun and funny moments as well in the series so yeah and i absolutely love all the children in here they're really really great <laughs> and the adults as well they're they're great as well so i would say if you don't mind reading some what of a sad kind of story about children <laughs> i would say definitely check this out it's very 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 good i won't say it's my favorite from tayo matsumoto as of yet because i still had to read a lot of his other ones but uh it is very good and i am enjoying it okay so the next series and the last but not the least is a series i had so much fun reading and i'm so happy to have in my collection and that is firefighter daigo a fire company m so i read 10 volumes to the series and there's 20 so i have 10 more left that i have to read and like i said i had so much fun reading this series it was a true blast like oh my goodness i loved it i got hyped for so many characters i was on the edge of my seat a lot of times it is just that good to me it really is and i honestly i do look forward to reading the rest of the volumes but i'm also sad because that means it's going to end and i don't want it to end it's so 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 good <laughs> um so it is about this gentleman right here his name is daigo and he dreamed of becoming a firefighter ever since he was little because he was actually saved by one um from a fire and once he graduates once he graduated high school he went ahead and became one and he was assigned to fire company m and so fire company m is a department that actually gets made fun of and they usually use the <laughs> they usually say that m stands for melancholy because this department actually does not see a lot of action within their area 
and that actually makes Daigo very upset because you know he's young he just graduated he's expected to see a lot of action um, but you know he doesn't come across it and so uh, he complains to his crew members about it and you know he's saying he's they're lazy and all this other stuff until he's called into his first mission and then he sees how dangerous this really is and he understands why you know his crew members are probably very happy to not be called too many fires because that means that they will remain safe and that also people in the town will be safe as well and so yeah <laughs> and another thing about daigo is that he is very good at what he does maybe <laughs> not too good but he's really good to the point where he risks his life uh he always kind of like puts his life in danger and he does a lot of reckless things but he ends up saving every victim that he comes across so whenever he's called into an emergency everybody comes out alive and so this is kind of the debate within the series amongst a lot of the characters and a lot of like old heads within the um, fire department is like you know you're supposed to stick by the book and you're supposed to follow certain protocols you're not supposed to just do whatever you want to but because Daigo does everything that he can he saves every victim like nobody like I'm telling you nobody no nobody dies not at all and uh, it's really nice because um the aftermath a lot of people were like you know i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you so yeah really really cool and daigo does some very reckless reckless things um i can give you one example um this is the, the start of it uh so um there was a fire in this building and their department and i think another department was called to help out the situation and they thought you know it was really good and that the fire was under control and so the people i think on the sixth or like seventh floor or something um there were people still on there and so they got a crane to um get the people off one by one and you know they were taking their time because they thought the situation was under control until daigo kind of like felt something and he was like you know this isn't right uh we gotta get out of here i we gotta get out of here and uh he was trying to communicate that to the crew um on the ground but they couldn't hear him and so he tried to convince the people <laughs> well not even try but he did convince the people of jumping off jumping out of the building and so there is like this kind of inflatable thing i don't know what it's called exactly but it was put down just in case um any victims got too scared of raiding and they just decided to jump if they did jump they'll be safe and so daigo convinced all these people to <laughs> jump off the building and fall on that and he's like we have to the crane is taking too long if you guys you know want to live we have to do this and so <laughs> Um, they didn't actually jump off. He threw them out the window, which if you're outside you're looking in, you'll be like, oh, whoa, 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 what, what's going on here? Um, so he ends up throwing everybody off until there's one person left and uh, the woman, she's like really scared and he, you know, is like, I'll jump with you. And so he got her and as they were jumping out of the window the floor explodes and so because of that daigo <laughs> was able to save everybody he knew something was off so he has this kind of like sense of kind sense of like a situation going wrong or like finding out that um there's like more victims in a building or in an area he can kind of sense that so yeah like i said super 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 cool i definitely recommend people to read this this is so so good i don't recommend to physically pick this up because it is out of print physically um you can find a few volumes but i don't I'm not going to encourage people to do that, but you can read this digitally. You can purchase it digitally and read it. And I would say definitely give this a go. Read a few chapters and see if you enjoy it. And um, yeah, I hope you will enjoy the few chapters and want to read the rest. Like honestly, this is so good. And like I said, I'm so happy that I have this in my collection. It's going to be honestly one of my favorites, really. 
Okay, so that was everything that I read for the month of June. Like I stated in the beginning of the video, I am so sorry it took me this long to do this and to upload it. Very, very sorry. Um, I'm happy that I was able to finally get it done and put it out here for you guys. Um, so yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts, um, whether you like some of these series that I'm reading, if you don't like them, if you're reading them, or if you're interested in them, let me know in the comments below and let's have a discussion about this. And I really do hope you guys enjoy, enjoyed it. <laughs> and thank you so much for tuning in and I hope to get <laughs> I hope to see you guys very soon I'm sorry my tongue is like I'm having a hard time talking for some reason but yes like I said thank you so much you guys and I'll see you soon bye bye